Hello and welcome to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast presented exclusively on the Chopped Sports Channel of the Premier Streaming Network. We are recording this on Wednesday, July 19th. I am your host, Laurent Cortines. In this episode, Chris and I will discuss Harry Maguire's loss of captaincy. We will discuss the full Women's World Cup breakdown and we will get to it all. Rashford, um, Mbappe updates, Onana updates, and I will pronounce the most difficult name in sports to pronounce, so stay tuned for that. Before we start, please like, share, and subscribe to the show. Like, share, and subscribe to anything you can find me on. I am everywhere. Also, check out Chris's show on Top Football Club, TFC, Top FC News on YouTube, and let's get to it. So on his uh, Sweet Bum Time uh, podcast, he's going to go solo squeaky soon. Squeaky Bum. Not squeaky, Sweet squeaky, Bum. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky uh, Bum. Dang it. <laughs> you know what? It's wrong, not a porn man. site, but it could be. It, it, I, keep get, <laughs> I keep getting it wrong, man. I'm sorry about that. But It might. It might. You know what? Chris really <laughs> reinforcing the fact that it probably needs to be rebranded. So if anybody wants to give us a new name, please feel free to do so in the comments. I could go with Laurent Cortines FC, Cortini. Uh, SQBT, or uh, I know people like to put their names on things, so maybe I'll just call yeah. it the Laurent Cortines podcast and call it a day. But uh, maybe, Squeaky maybe, Bum Time is has 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 had its, and now I think it might need to go. Maybe we need a, we need a <laughs> rebrand. We need a rebrand. But anyways. yeah, yeah, for sure. For, for, um, that's what's been holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we had issues last week, man, with the, with the audio, but we we got it now. We we came here on time and we got it all squared away so everybody that's listening i'm sorry about that we apologize but we we got it under control now so i had to actually so I had yeah. to switch mics uh so yeah chris i think you know if people don't know this has been chris's baby he's the one running the show he's been amazing we are getting our getting our sea legs in the off season so that when we hit the season and those things kick off in august or the world cup women's cup world cup final yep. comes off we're gonna be there we're gonna be sharp it's gonna be good Chris and I are going to have our banter, but we're still working through it. Yeah, that is true. That is true. By the way, the Women's World Cup, uh, when when does it start? I think I think either Saturday or next Monday. I'm not sure. It's, I know it's pretty soon. I know I'm going to look it up right now. The U.S. plays against Vietnam, I think. Uh, yeah, against Vietnam, Friday. July that might be 24. that might be a ten that might be a ten nothing game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going we're going to beat them again. Yeah, like Thursday the war. next. Thursday, I think the twentieth, July twentieth. So that's yeah, that's this Thursday. Yeah, the the U.S. plays the twenty first first... the next day. So, but I mean, you got teams like New Zealand. I think Norway is going to get that one. Yeah. Just What's look. nice is some of the games are on prime time West Coast, so we'll be able to watch them like lot, you know, in good time. Yeah. There'll be day games, but because it's in uh, Australia and New Zealand, the U.S. will be playing at six p.m. Pacific. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern on Friday. So get your gear out, cheer the women on, take a look at Trinity Rodman. Like you said, oh Chris, she's really a, has a chance to be a breakout because we're missing a lot of players, specifically I, uh, Mallory Swanson, yeah. who's a really good young striker who should be in her prime. And, and the old guard, I think, you know, um, yeah, uh, you know, ha, ha, sort of sort of running through their their course. Some of the players uh, you know, doing I that stuff. I, so. I will go. Out, out should be good. On the limb, I think uh, Trinity, Trinity Rodman is going to be the next star for the U.S. Mm-hmm. US national team. I, I really believe so. I mean, uh, you know, um, what's her name? Uh, I for, well, Rapino, she's retiring, of course, and but she's been mm-hmm. actually. I don't think she's been the top top player for the women's team recently. No, you know, she was at one point, of course, along with Carly Lloyd and. and uh, uh, but uh, now they're out. So the new generation. Alex Morgan is the name. It was in my head that I was trying to remember. Yeah, yeah no, it's her. Alex Morgan. She's actually, you can say that she is the player with the most um, n- name in the team right now. And actually, well, she's going to be the, 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 the nine, the striker. Mm-hmm. She, she plays here in my hometown. Yeah. She plays in San Diego at uh, the Wave FC. So, so it's nice. So I think uh, it's going to be interesting, man. Of course, the U.S. governs this 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 tournament. Uh, but I, you know, we were talking on the chat. We are actually not talking about just everybody in general putting their input. Mm-hmm. And 
I mean, it's it's controversial. We don't have that that subject today, but I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's kind of controversial how things went. You're trying to grow the sport, and like you said, it's probably not the wise not a wise idea to to take it to New Zealand or or you know to Australia uh, for sure to grow the sport really because it's not famous over there. Football, no, football no. Famous. I mean, to to be fair, to be fair, the the uh, the Matildas with Sam Kerr. They are a good team, and I think Australia historically has been very equity-minded with female athletes, and they have equal play and equal play, and they do great in Olympic sports. But it's a country that's, you know, I don't think I don't think Australia has, if it has 50 million people, I'd be shocked. Uh, right. Between those, the, the whole area, yeah, they pull. Now, to be fair, that's a U.S. and European view. Like, yeah, if grow in china you know it's more in their time zone you can grow the game in japan it's more in their time zone well, or you can grow the game in korea it's more in their time zone so to be fair it I, we do have a u.s and european centric view so maybe that's unfair on our part but as americans as european sport fans it's a little bit trickier to sort of get jazz for this one especially uh we do have a short turnaround from the euro to this tournament because it had been delayed so the, the women's euro was only last summer or two summers ago, yeah. and you know some of the European teams are pretty pumped. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Chris, can I can I do an impromptu go through the groups real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So Group A, the host New Zealand have Norway, the Philippines, and Switzerland. We would assume Norway would go through with Ada Hedberg, and then either the hosts or Switzerland go through. Group B, Australia, Canada, Nigeria, Ireland. That is a group of death, I would say. Canada have a, has a great program. Sinclair, I don't know if Christine Sinclair is playing anymore. Nigeria always bring great athleticism and power and have the pedigree within a group out of Africa. And then the Republic of Ireland, obviously, tough group. I couldn't call this one, but I would say probably Canada and Australia, the power of Sam Kerr. Group C, Costa Rica, Japan, Zambia. We talked about Zambia with our, with our girl Barbara, uh, but Spain is the class here. Spain are my favorites to be in the final and then japan are have a pedigree being world cup champions beating the u.s i believe in 2014 costa rica bringing up Concacaf. they're still trying a great nation in football but i don't know how far their women's program has gone and zambia we know about with their amazing striker uh group d another very very tough group china denmark England, Haiti. Haiti, we know, is, is going to be a plucky story where they're trying to raise money. Their country's in shambles. Um, going to be tough for them to even probably even win a game. They may give up 50 goals in these three games. They're really going to have a tough time. Hopefully, there's a lot of French players at play. But England are the class of the group here with Denmark. China really resting on former glory or being the first World Cup champion, famously in the final in 99 when Brandy Chastain rips her top off and it becomes the legend. Group E, you find Netherlands, Portugal, United States, and Vietnam. If this, this was a cup, the United States would not get it out. Men's World Cup, but this is the Women's World Cup. And the United yeah. States is far <laughs> better than Portugal. So U.S. and Netherlands still group with Vietnam making up the numbers. We need more groups to go. So just hang in there. This is my minute of glory. Uh, Brazil, <laughs> France, Jamaica, Panama. Uh, Brazil, not as good in the women's game as the men's game. Marta will be 38. She still leads the line for them. France also a bit in turmoil. Jamaica are a dark horse team that people really like. I like to see them coming out of the group with Manchester City women's striker Bunny Shaw leading the line for Jamaica. Very, very good team. Look forward to seeing Bunny Shaw up front for Jamaica. France missing a lot of players, a little bit older now. Group G, a wild card. Argentina, Italy, South Africa, and Sweden. Sweden, the historically strong group here, but I would expect that Italy would join them. Uh, perhaps Argentina finally getting their things together. Remember, we talked very briefly last week about uh, South American teams moving. And then Group H, you have Colombia, Germany, South Korea, Morocco. Morocco's men's did really well. It's good to see the women there. I'm assuming that we, female Moroccan team is probably mostly French, but it's good to see them there. I would say the class of this group is Colombia and Germany. Colombia always bring numbers. I'm excited to see how oh, their, yeah, yeah. Women, their fandom translates to australia because the colombians are the best supported group outside of some of the crazy european sides colombians really bring it when it comes to the world cup and those are the women's group stage world cup numbers starting on 
Thursday. I think, uh, <laughs> I think I know you're, you're, you're tired, but I think, uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I think either England, the US, uh, those are my Spain. favorites. Spain, of course. Spain. The, the, the issue with Spain is not a player, is not a talent issue. They have had a massive dust up with their coach where players yeah. walked off the field. They didn't want to coach with them. Strangely, the Spanish FA decided to keep the coach over the players. I don't know if that means the players will just be like, we'll just play because they know they don't have power or whether they'll play. But they're going to be made up mostly of Barcelona players. Uh, the Spanish, if you know this, Barcelona women's undefeated for two seasons, lost the last game of the season to Real the, Madrid the, after having already won the league. The the best player. They were literally like, Putelas? Busca, yeah. Pustelas? I don't remember. Yeah, something like yeah. that. She's something fantastic. Like that. And I will be misogynistic. She's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. She looks great. <laughs> um, is, that doesn't is. matter. That's not important. I'm, you're just getting my preferences. There's a lot of beautiful <laughs> women, but she happens to be the most beautiful woman of all the players. Shout out to Alex Morgan. Uh, always she's very a, She's gorgeous. also pretty. Yes, Had a big yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's not what it's for, but hey, yeah. why not? <laughs> um well, it definitely, that's, that's the appeal, you know, I mean, believe it or not, you know. Part of it. Uh, yeah, and they're so. really good. Like, and, I, and I'm good. not being funny. Like, high-level women's football is really, really quite good. I think it's worth watching. I think it sort of, the bigger thing is it, it lets you kind of let go of the notions of, oh, we watch it for the most talented people. I don't think that's true. You watch it for passion for effort for yeah. nationality and for the stories around the teams and i think that if you can let go the fact that they can't always make a cross field ball or some of their touches are bad or whatever it's really high quality from an effort and and stamina and fight perspective if you want to see good mentality this is where you want to go and i think the crowds are super positive you get a different vibe. Uh, I love the sound. I have to say this. This is one of the things that's great about it. I have a daughter, so I, I think about this a lot. The sound of a stadium that is a woman's sound of cheering. It's just a different sound where the majority is young women or girls. Right. It just it just sounds great, and I love to hear it, especially when they're singing like soccer chants of your national team or you know something silly in English. It just has a little bit of something different. So no, I recommend right. it. It's great. No, you're right. I mean, incredible. I have a daughter too. She's only nine months. So, but eventually you can hope. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, if you are in, uh, in third world countries, I mean, well, I mean, India's not going to win the world cup regardless, man or female, but what I mean is like Argentina or Brazil. I mean, if you, if you want that, that hope eventually, which, you know, some people say you shouldn't live your dreams through your kids and that's true, but you couldn't you couldn't hope you couldn't hope really to 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 for your little girl eventually to play football. Maybe of course now late twenty years later, maybe it, it develops more in, in like South America or you know, but really is is the man that I mean to, but to, to to take a step back and I think that's and a key thing that I, I think we should um touch on is the issue for these women's teams is um, is surely not the talent. You no. only need 11 players. The passion is there. These countries don't spend money on their women's No, that programs. is true. Right? They find ways not to use money. They don't give them practice time. They don't have the best coaching. Famously, uh, I believe one national team, and I can't remember, had the same coach for like 30 years. I think Spain, before this most recent coach, it's been the same 20 years because he was the only person who would do it. So I think with a country like, you know, with, with some of the sort of lesser, with sort of the bigger male football nations, but they're not doing well with women. It's a matter of focus. You can see it can change very quickly. The European team quickly changed focus and decided it was a priority. And all of a sudden you're seeing the level of play in those leagues go through the roof. And I have to tout my own team uh, because my beloved Manchester City, as much as you can talk about oil and whatever, they invested in that woman's team very early on forced Manchester United to go professional, forced Liverpool to go professional, because I think those clubs were into not having teams. Man United did not have a team. Liverpool did not have a team. These were big clubs without female teams. And respect to Arsenal, who had a team for a long time, and respect to Chelsea, but also respect to, to City, who made their team professional. These women's clubs were, were not professional. 
up until not even 10 years ago. These are women that had jobs and played football because they loved it. And so now you're and, seeing and professional were, women who can practice all the time. They weren't they were not. serious. Correct. Of but anyways, yeah. that's, that's and good. It, it, you know, and yeah. it's still not a lot of money. It's still yeah, like no, no. the world but, transfer fee for a woman's transfer, I think, is is half a million dollars. And, but with so that, that's like, to give you context. You know, I, I always say the numbers, I mean, even in the men's in the men's side, I don't even think numbers really reflect what a, what a player is worth. I think it's too much money now. But even though they also, a lot of these players make money as far as marketing and image rights, so they do, you know, you can, you can debate. And so at the same, in the same token, I, I mean, women, uh, women's sport is relatively smaller than men's at this, at this age. So at it this does time, make, sure. it, it does make sense that they get paid less. They shouldn't get paid too much less. They should make, millions i mean th that is a fact yeah. they, they should make in certain leagues though of course you, every every league in every country is different but uh but it's I mean, it's you know. it's more it's to me it's more about brand extension it's more about you know i only know my own team really well so i i, I yeah. apologize if there's other teams that do this but you see things like arsenal fan tv you see things like chelsea social media they really unify the club and you saw emma hayes cover the women's world cup She's a great coach and she's a great talker about football. And you just want to elevate and have you, you just need time, right? It's time to build the institutions of people remembering, oh, it's a women's world cup team. Oh, that's my team playing. I'm going to go support the girls or, hey, oh, my team is out of the FA cup, but I can watch the women's team. So it gives you more chances and another side to pick up because they are at the top level. These are the best of the best. And I think yeah. that's what people respond to regardless of the gender as long as it's the best of the best at their field, you can get involved, right? That's why the Women's World Cup is so good. That's of the women's team. That's why USL is so big right now. That's why the Women's Champions League is so good. I recommend watching next year. It's on, that I believe, true. in the U.S. It's on CBS. Watch it. It's really, really good. And it's really hard. It's old school. Like, they, they go straight to the round of 16. Only two teams from each team, each club make it. So, like... It's when you start it, they're already at the best of the best. So yeah. I know we've gone a little bit long on a women's no, but, World Cup, but it's good. But it's good. It's I mean, we, we need should, to talk. Should, it, should check it, out. Yeah. At, at this point, it is top football. You know, we talk about top football here in, in, in at Tucker Talk, and, and definitely uh, it's what's happening. And we also need to do our part to talk because if we don't talk, then we keep it hidden, and people that may not know about it don't know about it. Stay don't. You know, I mean, stay. Yeah, and not and, and again. Like, the thing yeah. I think about is, is your club. Like, start with your club. You support Real Madrid. There's a yeah. women's Real Madrid team. And you know what? They're not as good as Barca right now. So you no. should ask. Your, you should start whistling at your team. But like, there, there, hey, is no look, way, there is no way. Where's the women? You, there is no yeah. reason why Real Madrid shouldn't compete. Yeah, but Real Madrid have all the resources in the world. So it, they really They shouldn't. have to make it a priority. And exactly. you know what? Bar now Barcelona is embarrassing them, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> the women are. The men, eh, they're fighting, but... You know, and the thing is, it doesn't cost anything. Like, this is the thing with these big clubs. Like, you have the brand, it's still the shirt. To fund a woman's team right now, it's $5 million. That's, 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 that's an 18 year old who might become something, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's like a transfer from in the championship of the English league, or, you know, somebody is, it doesn't cost anything. It's, and it's worth doing. Anyway, yeah, let's true. get to our rundown Anyways, before I take uh, up all the we, air with, uh... you, with your show. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. We uh, um, we got to start talking about what, what else is going on in uh, Europe, European football. Yes. Of course, we're going to talk a little bit sure. on 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 this side of the of the pond of the of whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> and about Lionel Messi, really, is the only thing that's popping. I mean, the MLS is going, but you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, but European football, uh, we, we're not really going to get into the Mbappe deal. It's getting developed, and we're going to put a new video here uh, later in the. Um, in in the channel so later in the day so you, you'll you'll get that specific news but uh the biggest thing right now going on in europe of course everybody's playing their friendly games or everybody's getting ready arsenal finally got declan rice they're uh you know they're getting you know getting trained and, and warmed up arteta said they're not sure if they're going to be closing on transfer windows they're going to be looking but as far as their concern right now is as far as looking for somebody specifically they yeah. should be out of the market now they the got biggest, the they got the guy they wanted yeah yeah the biggest story is none other than harry Maguire. he's angry and shocked I, 
over Manchester United's captaincy X and he's ready to quit. Is he his... is he is he is he really angry it, and shocked? I is can't what, 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 what? I mean that's the, the information. <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm not sure. only not only well, he he must be angry if he came out on social media and, and talked about it the way he did. There's no reason why he should have I mean, technically there there's no reason of why uh other than getting attention from it is of why yeah. he should be going out to social media and tell him Ten Hag talked to me privately and he told me he I won't be the captain no more and blah blah blah. Like why do people want to know that? Other than you want controversy and he got it because everybody's talking about it. <laughs> Fools like us that you know somebody leaked that he's ready to quit and Chelsea might be considering a, a stunning transfer which I just don't understand. But what is your take? Well, listen, if if United and their fans think he's really that bad, right? If you really think that ten, that that he's really that bad, then you should just let him go. Because that would be what a big club does, right? Yeah. You're not afraid. So he goes. Big deal, right? That's what a big club does. And if United still want to be a big club, they have to let players go. For instance, I think I saw a stat a long time ago. And under this last 10 years with um with uh you know, since since Alex Ferguson, United have done terrible transfer business, and you can find it on Redmond, you know, uh, you, you know, Full Time Devils or whatever the channel is that you follow. United have been terrible at selling players, and they should take this as an opportunity. Get the twenty forty million from you from Chelsea. Just take it and let him go. If he's as bad as you say he is, let him go. As for the captain thing, this is such an English thing. Uh, I know, like we're my my focus is always much on English football, uh, and that's the, the the league that I cover the most and care about the most. But it's very strange. The rest of the world is is not so into captains. The English are obsessed with captains. All they do is talk about captains. <laughs> you know, you talk about Steven Gerrard, who's the captain they, of Liverpool. They, well, they, or... they have they have an importance. I don't think that anybody's the captain. Certainly, but think, but 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 no, but but, but the captain. English are specific about it, right? Like yeah. here in Spain, about oh. The captain well, well, of, because, of Real Madrid, like, get in, the paso. In, in Spain, it's more <laughs> of like longevity. So the oldest guys usually yeah. they just the do captain. it. They just do it by seniority, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. So what's interesting is is you know you have a you have a guy in Maguire, who, by nature of being a defender and the highest yeah. paid defender, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer decided that he should be the captain. Okay, fine. It's a very ceremonial position. It shows your status, your stature, your leadership within the club, your accountability. I will say this about Harry Maguire. He shows up for interviews. He takes it on the chin. He gets it, and he does do the talks. Like He doesn't run away, which is nice because some guys don't interview. Well, I mean, like, a, a, a lot, lot of these the, guys have to do it. I mean, there's no, there's no other way to put it. Well, but a lot, of the, a, lot of the, a, lot of the, a lot of the foreign players, they, don't, they, they play like, oh, I don't speak English well enough, so they don't do it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I know this because City had Aguero and David Silva, yeah, and yeah. I can tell you, in 10 years of David Silva, I never heard him speak which, once. Which that, All that, I know that, about him is... Uh, is just, just, just to point aside, that should be obligatory. You, if you come to play my club, you need to... I'm going to provide you cla cla classes. You need to learn the language. I mean, that's yeah. nonsense. Aguero and, and what Tevez did... I never liked that. I never liked it. But anyways. Yeah. But City let them do it, right? Because that's what they did. Uh, anyway, so goals. Maguire is a stand is a stand up guy. Uh, he has taken it on the chin. He has become fairly unfairly a lightning rod for everything wrong with United. Um, uh, John Santana, who's in our chat group, is just like he, he's like he deserves it. I don't think anyone deserves <laughs> it. But I think Ten Hag should have just like just stripped them immediately. Just be like something new. It's my team. Yeah. I want to do this. Rather than make it into this well, preseason weird thing, I it's bizarre. Well, yeah, McGuire actually is the one at fault. I mean, he definitely wanted well, attention but, from but, this. Oh, maybe he, but but you know what it is. Think about it this way, Chris. The season's about to start. They're gonna go out on the pitch. He's gonna play minutes. He's gonna go out with the without the armband, and another player is gonna go on with the armband, and then it'll just be a conversation. Like you can't hide from it so maybe he was trying to so, get out so you, you 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 think like ten hack should have just been like i don't know where just hey you who else casemiro you you're captain tonight and uh well it, it, it is it could have been just have been, been listen it should be i don't know how it worked i i'm not I've it shouldn't have been a big deal you said of, 
it shouldn't have been a big deal. It shouldn't have been announced. It should have just been actually. We're I will, doing it. Right? I will like, give it to you. I will give it to you because if if he would have done that, uh, maybe in well preseason, there's always nothing to talk about. So they're going to talk about that. Perfect time to do it after it, they won the Carabao Cup. Just change it because they would. But been like, but, oh, but, yeah, the, but then the people but then Whoop. then people would be like, so you <laughs> had a preseason preseason, and then he was your captain, and all of a sudden. You change it. People are always going to find a way to talk about it. But I do agree that if he just per se started the season with a new captain, then it's just too much going on that really probably yeah. wouldn't have been. And, as... and the thing is, it's Manchester United. You and I both know. It's always going to be talking about one of the greatest. You got to admit it. It's always good. people are going to be Ooh. talking about. People are going to be talking about one of the greatest of all time. Man United, man, yeah. they're they're going to be talk. They're, uh, there's yeah. always talks. Oh, I mean, listen, they're, 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 it, it, if you it's think Real Madrid, Ran United, Barca, Liverpool, right? Those are the four. If you think, if you those think, are the ab- biggest clubs in the world. If you think about it, uh, actually, you late earlier today, you were like, I got a few points from City, and I said like, perfect. And then I started looking at it, and I was like, wow, nobody like, cares. Because no, listen though, but <laughs> no, but listen, I know there's people that care, but if you actually go to every website, every article, everything is all Man United for the most part, or Arsenal, or yeah. but, and then yeah. I realized like, dang, you know, everything that we're our topics, you know, the Daily Mail, the Sun, the One Football, I mean, everybody's just about Manchester United, and I realized that, and I was like, wow. That, that's yeah. kind of biased, but yeah. Well, I mean, I mean and, and that's okay. Like, I don't, I don't be, I don't begrudge that, right? Like, we know what clubs run the news. It's the six, yeah. seven teams that everyone talks about all the time, yeah. right? The uh, with City, but also, but kind also of the breaking th- in just because they they've made people break in. But also, the they've thing about people. it, though, the the thing about it, it's it's a good thing also for a city because you want everything, and there's nothing to talk about about you. I mean, you want everything, so. <laughs> really, you know, there, there's no, there's no drama. Know. There's no, I mean, they, no they, drama. We they I try mean, and make up drama, they, they, and there's they, none. The, the other, the, <laughs> exactly because the other day the Daily Mail put uh, Jack Grealish still drinking, she's still partying, and it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make no as much noise at this point because no. what else? No. What are you going to tell somebody that won everything? You know, uh, now yeah. if he doesn't come in shape when it comes to the season start, then yeah. Definitely, people are going to talk yeah. about it. So, well, I, I mean, just to give my quick short shrift, if you're not aware, a city fan, you, if you're, it, it, what's happened is, is having won everything, a lot of the older players who've been with Pep from year from the first year are all leaving. Right, Gundogan's gone already. Uh, Sil- Bernardo Silva has been wanting to go for like three years. Cal Walker's got a deal with Bayern Munich already lined up, and now Riyad Mahrez, the first bid yeah. from a Saudi team, has come through very low. But those were players, to be fair. Uh, we know from this season, Walker was a little bit pushed off to the side. He did do a great job on Venetia. So these are players that won't affect City in terms of the, a, a full season, in terms of a, a full campaign, like a Premier League season. But it will affect how they can play different games in different situations. They are losing situational players where, you know, uh, uh, Mares was a special player when we needed a goal or some a team was playing really compact, they put him out wide and he could come on his left foot and do his thing. So or Gundogan, I think, is a key player, right? Obviously, he wanted to go to Barca for a long time. They didn't want to pay him. He's 33 years old. He's got two yeah. bad knees. They let him go. Now, now so, I got I got a question. I got a question about this. Uh, some of these statements that, that Maguire made because I don't know if it makes sense. He said since they mm. since the day I took on the role three and a half years ago. So Cristiano was there. He was not the captain. No. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, so he maybe may have was, been the vice captain. Of, and ha- maybe that was part of the problem because if I'm Cristiano in the team and Maguire, he's not telling me what to do, man. I, I tell him, man, go on somewhere. Go kick rocks, uh, man. Yeah, give, well, me, give me some Gatorade. Well, that was the, that was the issue, right? The team was fractured with, well, yeah, the, with the Portuguese but, but, and the English guys. And, and you got Pogba and uh, – Pogba, which I think I still we debated the other day. I think he's he's still. <laughs> yeah, I would take him if it was on my team. But but I mean, if you put him in that, you mix, can take him on your team. And when I play your team, I will beat your team because he's nah, not a winning player. I got Casemiro. If I'm Man United, I got Casemiro. I got nothing to worry about. You know. So I think I think man, I'm telling you. But regardless, so basically, listen. Let's just make a, uh, uh, the story short. McGuire has been shown the exit. 
you know, with this. Oh, he's I gone. Mean, he's long gone. He, he, no, but he, I, we don't know. Somebody's got to pay the price. And uh, well, let's. They let's, should just. Let, they should just exile him. No, but let's just let's, do the dirty. Well, they they can't, they you're can't playing with the under twenty ones. They, they got to get some money, man. They they can't they can't just let him. I mean, no, go you, free. but you you've got it's a sunk cost. It's just it's gone. Uh, he's that's it. They bought him four years ago. Paid eighty yeah. million. This 80 is it. Million. It's done. He's gone. They're gonna have to 80. get twenty out of him at least. And but so so okay so let's let's shift let's cross fade into what has been sounding and is that Chelsea Pochettino might be interested and I really don't understand like I I I try to look hard and I don't want to get into the debate of when Manchester United got him but the fact that Chelsea is interested I don't understand how they see Maguire being a top club player. He is not a top club club player to me. I the mean, funny thing I is, don't see that. is perhaps, so here's the thing, right? We know that with England, Harry Maguire is a good player. This is a team that made a Euro finals with him at the back. This is a team sure. that made uh, a World Cup semifinal with him at the back. So he's clearly not crap, right? Well, <laughs> like, yeah. he's not. Hold on. We also have to uh, acknowledge the fact that Manchester United is a zoo that has basically only been coached for the last 12 months. The years before that, there was no coaching going on. Rangnick had no control over that team. Ole basically didn't coach. So for the last half of Maguire's career or the last five years, he hasn't been coached. Perhaps Pochettino. You know, remembers him at Leicester when he was last in the league and is like, you know what? That dude can do a job and I will get him back to the job he needs to do. I mean, because right now that team has Thiago Silva in the middle of a back three who is 38 years old and still their best defender, which is a problem. Yeah. Now they have Fofana, they have Badashil, they have a bunch of young that guys who are sort of finding I mean, their way. And perhaps Maguire can just go, okay. I'll play in the middle of this three. I'll take the ball uh, out. I'll just always drop deep and 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 try and read the game from where I am versus trying to use speed and being part of a back I four t- where he's got to find the right angle. I mean, and he's it, getting exposed. if I was McGuire, I mean, I would jump on it. Definitely. Oh, for sure. I would you go know. to Chelsea like that. No, West Ham, Tottenham and Newcastle, you know, they could be interested as well are considering. So, I mean, I don't think they'll give more than twenty million for him. Twenty five. No, that's it, man. Because that's you know, and and I don't think there's going to be any issues. They want to get rid of him, and he obviously, but he would. I think he would go to Chelsea. Obviously, that that would be the number one choice. You the know, team go to another that top he club. should go to that he could revive his career. I think is West Ham. Yeah, but I think he could do something at Chelsea now because you mentioned all those youngsters. I mean, he could build a name. He's going with a certain – I mean, it's hard because Maguire, man, he's known around the world already. So I I, I don't know if I want him – He's got to be protected, right? He's got to have guys in front of him who – he's got to have a coach that knows what he's good at. That wants him. And can protect him from the things that he's bad at, right? Yeah. Turning and kind of – getting into trouble, but he's still good carrying the ball. He's still good with a line-breaking pass. It's well, just that know, he was put into situations that he couldn't do. He's not a well, good yeah, exactly. 1v1 I mean, defender in Ma- space. Maguire is an old-school defender. You know, mm-hmm. if you give it to him, he's going to kick it out of stance. He's not going to worry about it. Now, if you ask him to to, to, to control, to, to possess the ball, he's going to, he, you know, he might make a mistake that he's going to be on, on Shaq in the Fool for a week. <laughs> So no, but it's it's more it's more it's more things happening in transition where he's got to make decisions where there's a no, winger yeah, and, that and there's a ball carrier he doesn't and know he's got to gotta make those decisions and he just doesn't have the foot speed to handle those two on one situations yeah, yeah. or when when things are chaotic and people are running towards him he has a hard time and I think in possession is where he's at his best and when he can have someone in front of him protecting him. That's true of a lot of defenders, but I don't. I think the idea that Maguire is terrible, I think, is unfair because he hasn't really no, been he, injured that much. He, he, and uh, it's in there. He needs a good coach. 
he needs to he he can definitely help a Premier League team. I'm not and I'm not saying absolutely middle of the table up, you know. And uh, listen, you li- Spurs fans, don't throw up in your mouth. He's better than every single defender Spurs has. Every single one. I would kick Eric you, Dyer out of the fucking stadium to have Harry you, Maguire instead. If you want to, Eric conv- Dyer is trash. If you want to convince Kane <laughs> to stay. Then give Maguire. No, that, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the way. He's but okay. he's, you, you know, the thing is, you just got to think about where the team is, right? Like, is he yeah. better than what you have? If he's better than what you have and he's $20 million, that's nothing for yeah. a team, for a Champions League playing defender. Now, Let's be fair, right? Now, uh, I made uh, a quarterfinal with him on the team. According to, to reports is that Ten Hag – and United have been a little, you know, upset at his unwillingness to leave the club. And they say that that's why. <laughs> Give me that's my why, checks. Give me my checks. Why, that's why Na- I want to go. You know, they, they couldn't they couldn't sign Naples center back Kim Ming Jae. And, but I, yeah, I that, agree with it's you. It's McGuire's I mean, if, fault. Sure. If, if I have a contract, I'm not going to make it easy. You either pay me or find somebody else to pay me. I mean, I do. Think I, about I Gareth the, Bale. Now, that's Think about Gareth Bale. That's a week now. Gareth Bale sat in Spain, not oh, giving yeah, 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 any yeah, yeah. crap, no. and just like he's playing golf. Donde? Said, Let's go. He said he I'm put not a going flag anywhere. up that said Wales <laughs> after Wales golf, and Real Madrid was like last. in that order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it, it is what it is. But no, I mean, you, you can't be mad at a guy. I mean, you know, two hundred k a week. That's his livelihood. I mean, he doesn't, if forever. he doesn't want, he doesn't, if he, to, he doesn't have to help the team. He doesn't exactly, have to. he does. As He's got as he a contract. His, he just plays it out. As yeah. far as he can help is say, okay, you want me out? I'm willing to move. I mean, you know, but he's not going to cut down on, on his on his money just because no. you – I mean, they they made him that deal. They let him have it. So they, they got to that's take their pill, that's man. That's United's fault, right? Exactly. Now, Again, the worst run club in the league. Well, now there's five candidates that, according to the Sun, for the captaincy of Eric Ten Hag's. Um, okay, well, who vacancy. are they? So we got Casemiro, which I think should be. But okay, because I think how's I his think, English? Well, I don't know. He's got to talk to the refs. Yeah, well, that, that is he true. He can't be the captain. Hey, but okay, Casemiro, who else? Hey, Casemiro, <laughs> Casemiro is an outlaw, man. He he's I, I wouldn't put it back, but. Marcus Rashford, they, they have him as well on this list. And, and I mean, I can understand it because of the, talk the enough, l- longevity, but you need to have a dog right there. And I like Casemiro being in the middle. He's, in, he's going to be more than likely in every play. But we'll see about his English. You're right. I mean, that's got to be important. You know what's funny? The player that I think it Bruno should Fernandez. be if we take English, but he's a baby. He <laughs> rolls around on the floor and complains about every single call. Yeah. You want your captain to lead the team. That was, I think that's actually one of the things that hurts him from being considered a great is well, you got to shut the, you got to shut up and play, dude. Yeah. I think he, too much. he was, I think he was captain for a few games last season. If I'm not no, sure. of course. I mean, I would imagine that he's captain often. Like he, he, he's the likely leader. He does speak up. He does get in players ears. He is doing all that work that you'd expect, but that, that attitude that he has, I don't know where it comes from or why he does it or whatever, but that stuff, I, I, I wouldn't want the guy who represents the club to try and get a ref to, to be on our side, um, be a guy who is constantly haranguing and bothering the ref all the time. So my pick would be Luke Shaw because he's English. He shows yeah. versatility. He does what he wants. He does what he can for the team, and he's been on a team for the longest. It, he is, but I mean, does he play cons- consistently? Yes, he, he played center. This is hell, one of the man. reasons that Harry Maguire needed to leave. Remember, but Harry Maguire was not injured. Lissandro Martinez does his Achilles, and Ten Hag put Shaw at center back before Harry Maguire. Yeah, oh. yeah, but but what I'm saying oh, is now 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 Martinez is back. Varane uh, is back, and some people put Varane as well. His English is good. Yeah, but, but Shaw, I, Shaw, is, Shaw is really he, good. He, he's not a good captain. The Varane is not a guy I know for for a fact. No, 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 Real, he's not. I know Real he's Madrid. Not. He's not a. He's never. He never was. That was part part of the problem that he just didn't have. Right. That, Whenever Ramos that, didn't play, they were a mess. The attitude. 
<laughs> so uh, yeah. Martinez, another guy, but I think he just just got to the club. Again, I mean, the Argentinian attitude. How's his could... English? Well, he's in How's play. his English? Do these guys speak English? I don't know. These are now, the questions I'd um, have. I, I do. I, I would vote for Casemiro. I would. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's the logical. He's the logical player. He's somebody again, that you know. Only, is, my, it's a yes, presence. He's the logical player. Yes, he's yes, a presence. I agree. I agree. Now, Rashford. I know he's a kid. He's the Manchester United kid, but I, I, I just don't see him. He's all really. the way up there in the front. Who's, yeah, nobody yeah. wants a striker as the captain, unless yeah, it's no. unless it's Alan Shearer. They don't want. They don't. They don't run. They don't run back down anyway for anything. So yeah, much well, less exactly. for a foul. You got uh, well, The funny thing is, is that. If McTominay were better, I feel like McTominay is actually the kind of guy who would be a good captain. He's kind of like a, a a Jordan Henderson type where he's not actually as good as anyone on the team, but he plays with his heart and tries to win games yeah. based on what he's got. So that would be another logical one to me, but I don't think that anyone wants McTominay on the team anymore. That's he's true. a representation of their failure. But I think he's the kind of player, if I'm a United fan, I kind of want McTominay on the team. I want him to be the guy who comes off the bench and represents the academy that represents the badge, right? You need those guys that give lineage of space and time connecting a club together. Yeah. All That's right. Well, take we'll see it. what happens uh, with that. And uh, no, we got to get moving now. Uh, Marcus Rashford agrees to a $375,000 per week. My goodness. He better be a captain. He better be everything, fixing the bathrooms, he fix it, you know, because, whoo, boy, a That's a lot a of money, man. Five year That's a mistake. contract. Five year contract, boy. You know, but twenty five years. I think old, the, the issue the issue is with him is like to me, sorry, this is my thought. The guy he did he was hurt and I give him a little bit of credit. He had a bad shoulder or whatever. But to me, when he faded for a while there before Ten Hog got credit for bringing him back around. Oh, Ten Hogs got his confidence back up. First of all, if you're a world-class player who's on 325,000 pounds a week, you shouldn't need your coach to turn you around. You yeah. should have done that yourself. You're 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 England's number not you're England's winger. Like what are you doing? So, I again, I think I said it last time, I think he's a good player. He has scored big goals, including that bullshit one in the derby where he was offside but they didn't call it uh, against Manchester City. Uh, I'm over it. It's okay. Um <laughs> And, you know, he he did carry them in that middle portion of the season. I just don't think on any other team he would not be this big of a player. I think it's because he's from Withsnall. He's from Manchester. He came up with the club under Van Gaal. He's, he's a red through and through. He does yeah. all the charity stuff. His story, yeah, I think, is much better than his play. I think and he's okay. It doesn't mean he's bad. I'm just saying I don't think he's it. Yeah, I mean, he uh, apparently with the rumors, PSG might want to get him because uh, Mbappe is probably more than likely leaving. Well, he obviously decided to stay. Why would you leave? I mean, this is your everything is your home, your friends, everything. You know, the club you you grew up. It's a big club in the world, and plus they're going to pay you almost four hundred thousand a week. Like, why why am I going to leave for France? I mean, the weather sucks. Oh well, my! Yeah, th this is the, the, these <laughs> are these these are these these are these bullshit stories that get made up, and they just yeah. yeah they, but um first of all it was probably some one of those of the some of those like made, some of those get made up the way they raise the price on their negotiations you know of like and and it, and, it, and it sells papers and it does things like us for people like you and i to do shows and that, yeah, that's fine which is okay. good <laughs> the thing is is that um last season i'm pretty sure he outperformed his expected goals now you're going to hear me say that people get mad at me when i start talking about expected goals but i'm using expected goals uh, he scored 30 goals on on 20 expected goals. That's just – he was lucky. Now, is he a good finisher? Has he been over his expected goals almost every year? Yes, but plus 10, that is a lot. So yeah. in all competitions, 56 games, 4,200 minutes. That is an insane amount of football to play. Uh, a little bit too much for my liking. Uh, they probably need another striker. He's almost a goal every other game, 0. 0.6 goals. Uh, per 90 minutes so almost a goal a game but 0. 0.6 is, is not good. is good but it's not like top 10 in the league well i mean, well, I, mean I, 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 I just like say, I, it was his it was his first 30 goal season i i think that this Every, kind of he's the, only had 21 22 uh i just i think I'm just this not, kind of contract this kind of contract you gotta pay somebody that 
that is the, probably the best player in the Premier League. Somebody that's, you know, right. I mean, it it, it had to Holland, be. Mbappe. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean that's what probably they could. Pay. I mean, what? How could you attract a big name in the world? I don't even think Premier League teams really are looking for that because, or else they would get into the mix for real, like for Mbappe. Well, they got Haaland, of course. So I guess that's wrong. I'm but, gonna, but I don't I'm even know why Haaland gets paid. A lot, oh, probably the same number, honestly. Yeah, but I'm do you put tell him you in, the same, guy, in the same level? No. Here's the thing: I'll tell you a guy who's as good as as Rashford, and people will laugh at me when I say it. He's not that much better than Ollie Watkins, okay? The striker for Villa, okay? He's not. Villa just doesn't create as many opportunities and doesn't play the ball in behind like that. I don't think Marcus Rashford is that much better than Ollie Watkins, okay? I think you could swap those two players for each club, and Ollie Watkins could do the same job as Rashford does. In fact, he's probably better because he's stronger and older. Now, could I be wrong? Sure. I just not a big Am I blasting United because I'm a City fan? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But I just don't. I, I like Rashford. I think he's good. I think he's a fine player. I don't think he's the striker that's going to win you the Champions League because I just found out who the striker who wins you the Champions League is. And to have those guys, they are the top, top, top notch players. And City didn't win it until they had Holland or the threat of Holland. But, right? we had, but okay, you know, so enough. I, I... I get you. I get you with the threat because we haven't gotten to City yet, and Haaland didn't perform well in the Champions League in the, no, in the games. That well, the whole mattered. team didn't. They were scared. And they the were petrified. No, but not. I'm not. I'm not just talking about the finals. I'm talking about the games that matter the most. I didn't see Haaland. I think. I mean, I like Julian Alvarez. We need to give him more time. Uh, I do. Believe oh, I love that, him. But, I love him. But, He's a hell of a player. Oh my but, god. Anyways, uh, Manchester United are close to getting Onana. We've talked about this before, but we're just trying to update real quick. Uh, you know, 43 million pounds from Manchester United to Milan, Inter Milan. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Onana, I think really good, good deal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. And so, if you, especially when you put into context five years, years ago, five years ago, Liverpool played 70 million for Allison, who was considered the best in Italy uh, when he was at Roma. So, same type of player. Uh, I think the only thing that I would worry about is just like, you know, Premier League. How's he going to handle it? Is it was he just a moments player? Exactly. Can he well, can he yeah. sort of do the grind of? But but Inter is a big club, so to be fair, yeah, yeah But he yeah, was yeah. so good in the Champions League. City could have really ran away with that game, and he was really great. So yeah. Onana, oh, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I okay, love an so athletic the, keeper. The, the, I think he's great. This is your moment. Newcastle has launched. A club record offer of 82 million pounds for Napoli star. Cavazzalia. <laughs> I don't whatever, man. I, I don't that's even right. think that's that's <laughs> way too long for what you said. But uh I mean they're prepa- they're preparing yeah. for they're preparing for the Champions League, man. I'm I'm excited to see Newcastle, man, because they're they're just a, like a team of the past that 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 just haven't been on the Yeah, on they the, I mean listen. I love seeing as those much as I love black stripes. Yeah, I, I, as much as I, you know, I love my club and everything. I'm more of, of a fan of the stories and and style of play. And I will admit freely that Newcastle were the best team to watch last season outside of uh, Manchester City. Oh, and Brighton. Don't Brighton. It's Manchester City, then Brighton, then Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so. Uh, they pressed, they ran you ragged. I loved seeing crazy Dan Byrne at the back, but it's going to be a different season for them this year, right? They're going to have European football. They're not going to be able to play the same 11 guys over and over and over and over again. What Eddie Howe did was a coach of the season level performance to have guys like Murphy contribute, to have Almiron, who was dead and buried, have 11 goals, to exactly. still be rocking with Longstaff in the midfield, guys that embody that area of the country for England because it is special. These are these are areas that are bigger. The clubs are bigger than just football. They mean more. I mean, True Jordy, who's on YouTube, one of the bigger YouTubers of all time, he started as a passionate Newcastle fan. He's yeah. expanded past that and gotten canceled and recanceled, and he's back, and he does all sorts of stuff. But it's because he's a Jordy. He lived with the brand. And so that passion comes through, and I think all the Geordies ever wanted, all the Newcastle supporters ever wanted, was a team that reflected who they were as a city. 
And that's what Eddie Howe has done. And it's one of those things that I like to talk about a lot, which is the concept of a team being connected from the players to the supporters, to the coach, to the front office, right? Like, yes, they're owned by Saudis, but the owner is an English woman who's the chairman and she's running the team. So they have that alignment of everything being connected. And I hope that they have a good season. I don't think it's nailed on that they'll make the top four. I think that they'll be lucky to get out of a group. But because when you have to grow in I think the get, Champions yeah. League, yeah, go ahead. No, I think I think they can make the top. I think they can make the Champions League again. I think they can fight. I think they can fight for the Premier League. Man, I know it's tough, man. But Manchester City, we'll, and we'll definitely make this. A, a oh, second. they're gonna come down. They're gonna City are coming down. There's but, no way. Uh, Arsenal, we gotta see what's level. happening, and we're gonna make. It, we're gonna talk about this definitely in in, in later episodes uh, when we have more time. Mm -hmm. But but I, I do believe that they're gonna they're gonna fight. Uh, they're gonna fight for it, and it, this is good, man. It's this just the thing is, Chris. There's just there's too many teams, right? I know. Like, I know. I know it's City locked but in. I don't. Sure. I don't see Chelsea or United is, is, fight in there. So, you think United drop out of the top four? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what what has changed? I mean, okay, Mount. Okay, uh, if Mason you're on Mount's the Mount, not enough if, for you. If, if you're on the Mount bandwagon, <laughs> I mean, that's fine. But okay, I mean, okay, Mount so really... so you're saying you're saying Chelsea and and United I, don't make it. Okay, fine. That leaves us Arsenal. Well, I'm not saying Liverpool, that necessarily they don't City. make it, but but Liverpool. I mean, look how they ended. So. All of a sudden, they're gonna. Of course, they're gonna be fighting all the time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, big teams are always gonna be there. They're gonna be, uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, I it, see this, our, it's a vote for Klopp. Do you believe in Klopp? Well, I, is he I do. really gonna I have do. two you, you, down seasons in a row? No, no I, you always gotta believe in that big old smile. So, you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. but I think I see Arsenal winning. But we're gonna get in debt into this, man. This is gonna be. It's gonna be good talk. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be good. What, oh, we uh, have to. We've got to do a prediction. We got to write yeah, we, it all down. We, we'll make we graphics and everything. We, you're right. We <laughs> definitely got to do that. Um, all right. So just quick news. Uh, what do you think about PSG Ultra sending chilling warning signs to Blauvich? I don't even know what the heck this is about. I mean, I know that is this even related to football? Like the poor kid just just put uh, three fingers. I don't think he was meaning to do anything. And he's supposed to be going to that team uh, or, you know, PSG is supposed to be okay. seeking uh, him so i don't think he's gonna go so anymore. i have a i have a i have a dear friend my friend dan sormaz who is a serbian via canada and when you talk about the balkans and you're talking about between serbs croats slovenians yeah. uh, uh macedonians albanians you're talking shit that is like blood feuds from the 14th yeah, century yeah. no I they hold on to stuff that is beyond any of our comprehension <laughs> Like yeah. you want to, you want to, you want to talk about the best derbies in the world. Partisan versus Red Star in Belgrade is like they set things on fire. They have army trucks that walk the fans through. So these are the toughest groups and the toughest people in the world. And if he made some sign that represented something that we don't understand, it's real and it's not a joke. <laughs> well, and, and you, you you're right. You, you're what was the, right. What was the, Yeah, yeah. It's old school stuff that we don't even understand. It's like. Oh, I don't even know you, if you he put is... a death curse on my family from the 10th century. You're like, oh, but okay. P but PSG... That's why I love football. I love this kind of stuff. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And because because culture actually gets behind this. And, yeah, it's uh, awesome. you know, we don't know what, what what's going on. And I guess it's supposed to be referred to Serbian supremacy over Kosovo. But I, I, I just I want to I want to know I want to know what it what has God. to do with PSG. I mean, I understand PSG has or France, Paris, you know, Paris has. Yeah, people from all over the world. So, I mean, I just didn't put the two together, but I'm sure they have their reason. Well, However, you know how, you know how never some a of reason these, to well, threaten well, somebody, though. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I keep jumping in because I love this kind of stuff. No, you're good, you're good. Um, a lot of this stuff comes from some of these ultra groups are sister clubs with each other. So there may be a connection with PSG to a team in Serbia uh, or like you said, immigrants, a lot of people after the, the Serbian war, they immigrated all around Europe. So there's a lot of Serbs in England. There's a lot of Croats. They're all over the world. And so um, this may have been one of those things where a group that has associated themselves with PSG have now sort of joined in and, and yeah. been a part of it. So uh, we'd have to do a little bit more research. I'm just we'll trying to, to run through it really quickly. we we'll have to get yeah. a Serbian here, your friend. But anyways... Uh, <laughs> Quickly, William is actually not going to go anywhere. It seems like he's going to stay at Fulham. So that's uh, it's so I, good you know, for them. Yeah, yeah. For he was sounding for Nottingham Forest, 
but he seems like he's he's fine at Fulham. So uh, that's good. And uh, quickly, a couple of minutes, what do you think about Lionel Messi's uh, welcome in Miami? By the way, that stadium is the smallest stadium in history, and it's just sad to see Messi in the stadium that small. So, well, and, and like you he, said, that I just team think of has this. been poorly run, and uh, now all of a sudden everything is great. No, that's not true. But he could. So I think, uh, again, I think it's one of the worst run teams in the MLS. And that's not that's not an indictment on David Beckham. This is a guy who's a brand. He spent most of his life playing football and he's made his money by being himself and being cool. That does not mean that he knows how to run a football club. Right. Uh, Whoever his partners were. I know that they had trouble securing the stadium. It took them three years just to get the stadium off the ground. So that just goes to show a level of where they are. The next thing that they was, they hired Phil Neville. Phil Neville, who couldn't manage the Lionesses, and they ran him out of town. The next coach after Phil Neville won the Euros. (laughs) That's how bad a coach he was. He couldn't coach the women's team. Yes, he has the halo of... Sir Alex Ferguson, yes, he has his badges, but this is an English coach who couldn't do well with the English women's team, couldn't get him out of the quarterfinals. They get a new coach, they win the Euros, okay? So that's just one of those, like, went from Gerard to Unai Emery, basically is the same kind of thing. Yeah. That was his friend that he played with when he was a teenager. So he nepotism his own friend to be a coach. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So there's that. And now we have Messi, right? Messi's deal was only happening because of Apple stepping forward and they basically gave him the farm they They gave gave him him anything like that's not a negotiation if you get bent over a barrel because he wanted to go to miami the bigger issue i find is this miami team does not have talent they only have 12 games to make it to the to the mls uh cup and you are setting yourself up for failure if you think that messi is so we know this about football Football is, and I, you, you're going to hear this a lot, Chris. This is one of my lines. Football is a weak link sport. Basketball is the strong link sport, meaning one player can completely change the fortunes of their team. In football, one bad player means your team is terrible. <laughs> and Messi cannot change that team enough. Now, we did get Busquets as well. We're waiting on Jordi Alba. But if you're going to tell me that that team is going to make up 15 hey, hey, points in 12 Sergio, games, I'll be shocked. Sergio Ramos might be joining. Hazard, <laughs> so, washed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 we'll see what happens with, with Inter Miami. It's good. It's good for the MLS. The sport is going to grow, but it, uh, it is good for the MLS. Yeah. I, I'm talking from a purely yeah, just sporting team, perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. This is well, the worst team in MLS. Yeah, and you're right. You're They're right. 29th. I agree with that. I agree with that because being right? last, I mean, they didn't yesterday. St. Louis, my St. Louis team. I'm a fan of St. Louis now because they just got a, a damn football team. They, hey, man, that's it, that's, it, it that's took, the best time to get in. It, it, it took them to get rid of freaking the Rams for us to get a, a soccer team, but that's cool. I'm not sure I appreciate the, the trade, but uh, but we beat them like a. Drum but look yesterday. at this. Look at this. Right. Inter Miami are on 18 points. The Chicago Fire are on 32. That's to make the playoffs. I think the top eight make the playoffs. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Right? That's – I can't do math because I feel really stupid right now. Uh, that's 12 to make 30, right? So yep. they're 14 points behind, and they, are, they have 12 games to go. You're telling me they're going to make it? They have the worst goal difference in the league by f- far. They're literally the worst team in all of MLS. The only thing that makes them not as bad is that Toronto FC with Insigne and Bernadeschi are worse. Well, Sergio Ramos is going to fix all that. Anyways, this is it. Oh, for you're, this. you're a big Ramos guy? No. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I like him, but, you know, just just irony. Really. I mean, not, not irony, but I don't know. Uh, he, he, we just, they just bring in old players that don't have a spot in Europe. Other than Messi, which he could have played for any team probably, but he chose Miami, and I'm not sure that if if Beckham had a team in in Cincinnati, that he would have gotten them there. I think is well. I he chose he Miami Mi- for you can we already <laughs> we already know the reason, right? Yeah, because so, he could go shopping. Exactly. He's, the, the footage the of public. him shopping with his family. Yeah, but, <laughs> I bet he hasn't been able to do that in a long time. He was testing the waters for sure. He was testing yeah, he the waters. I'm not sure he's go. gonna. I'm not sure he's gonna do that a lot though because. 
I don't you know, think that was too bad. The thing is, no, like, wasn't why too bad, is he but... shop even even in the U.S.? Why is he shopping by him with his family? That's hey, he just wanted to he just wanted to live a normal <laughs> life, man. Anyways, that is it for this episode. Um, go ahead, finish your point. Oh no, I got nothing. Okay, I did a lot of talking. Sorry, Chris. No, you're fine, man. We're good. We're good. This is this was this this was actually a great episode. I, I actually really enjoyed. I didn't enjoy the previous ones. I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm playing with you. I'm playing okay. with you. No, uh, no, it's fine. We uh, had some we had some mishap. That's good. No, no, but yeah, the audio thing. But we're good now. We're we're good to go. And uh, of course, thank you to everybody that's listening on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, on the website, on YouTube as well. These are the video goes goes there and the clips as well. So shout out to Laurent Cortines always staying with me here and 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 doing some work. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. That was the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast with Laurent Cortines. We are the football wing of the Chop Sports Channel, presented exclusively by the Premier Streaming Network. We will be recording on Sundays and Thursdays, so be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. And if you're listening on Apple or your own podcast, your special podcaster, please rate and review the show. It means everything to us, and thank you, and we'll see you soon.